Hi Cubies, here's your Alexandra again. Well, it's a rainy day outside uh, and that's the perfect time for another painting tutorial. So, in this painting tutorial I paint something uh, for my little uh, dungeon crawler game. And uh, to be honest, every dungeon crawler game needs a hero that is a barbarian. So, you had him in Hero Quest, you had him in Warhammer Quest, even Diablo and Diablo 2 and Diablo 3. Well, not actually in Diablo 1, but Diablo 2 and Diablo 3. You, you can't go without a barbarian. So, this time we will paint him. This is obviously a Chaos Marauder, a Chaos Barbarian, and well, we will take a look at him today. So, first <coughs> we will paint the skin. And for the skin tone, I have uh, grabbed me three colors from Vallejo Model Color. Uh, this is first Burnt Cat Ready with a number 70814, then uh, Solomon Rose 70835, and Dark Flash 70927. And with those, we will paint the skin. So, this we will uh, use as highlight color. And uh, with this too, we will uh, start to mix our first base color. <clears throat> this will be uh, our first base coat. This looks like a uh, bronzed flesh. And to be honest, this is too, too yellowish for my taste. Uh, skin tone is every time a little, little pinkish, little reddish uh, inside. And so I will... Uh, dab a little bit of this uh, red tone in it to give it a more more reddish feel. So here we go. And with this color we will paint now the whole skin. As you can see I have uh, previously primed the miniature in white. And yeah that's quite an easy step. You see the uh, color is a little bit thin, but that's no problem, because we will go over it in several layers anyway, and uh, so we don't need a 100% uh, covering rate right now. Also, uh, the brush that I use here is a synthetic brush, and <coughs> it's, it has a little hooked up uh, tip, so no perfect brush, but this is just to blocking out the main coat of colors. So, nothing to worry about. And for that uh, blocking out step of painting, I usually don't use a good brush because, uh, well, it's kind of a messy job and uh, I, I don't want to damage my brushes uh, by using good ones for those steps. So, like usual, I will finish now the paint job here on all the skin and uh, be right back when this is dry. Okie dokie, the skin tone is painted yet and while this is drying I will paint uh, quickly the uh, trousers of him in a brown tone. I use for that Flat Earth 70983 from Vallejo Model Colors. <coughs> and yeah, also just simply paint it on, but uh, you don't have to use this exact brown tone, you can use any brown tone you want. This is just personal preference. So, as usual, I'll uh, start painting this, uh, finish painting this and be right back. The good thing about barbarians is they don't have uh, a lot of stuff on them. So, as you can see, I have uh, been working all the brown parts, uh, here at the sword pommel, then here the little horns on the helmet, and also some leather stripes here and there, and his whole trousers and boots. I have painted in brown, and uh, now it's time to uh, finish blocking out all the main colors. <coughs> so, um... Many of you um, are starting in the hobby and uh, don't know what colors they should buy. Um, for example, in uh, several, several, uh, you have 
several versions of skin tones and uh, red tones and uh, you don't know what to buy well here's a little example for example I have here just one silver tone so but I want to paint uh, the whole barbarian with uh, several different silver tones what I then do is simply uh, add black to the uh, silver and darken it down so then I can create two different versions of uh, silver with a just one, well, with two different paints. Black and white are also uh, <coughs> not only a color to uh, use on the model, you can always use them to uh, differentiate the colors and brighten them up or darken them, them down. So, for example, here. I mix those both colors and et voila, we have a very dark silver tone, like uh, for example the GW bolt gun metal. This is uh, just simple uh, methyl silver plus black and et voila, you got bolt gun metal. And this chain mail is just, as a, as just a different uh, variation and uh, the new colors, uh, I think they're called lead belcher and uh, what not, are basically the same. Just <clears throat> for the start, you just need one color. Well, over time, you will go and buy uh, several different paint pots uh, or mix in your own color variations with uh, your empty paint pots. <clears throat> and that's totally okay uh, to, to mix up his own colors. So uh, <clears throat> you don't have to mix them on the palette all the time. But like I said, for the beginning, it's uh, absolutely okay with a, a small variation of colors. For example, uh, all you need to uh, begin painting with is, uh, well, let's say we have here a, a Prussian blue. That uh, is one main color. That's a basic blue tone. You can brighten them up and darken them down in uh, quite every uh, version you uh, need. Well, you could, uh, for example, uh, combine this with, uh, for example, magic blue or some uh, um, ultramarine blue or something like that. That gives you a good variation of blue tones. Then for greens, uh, we need one basic uh, nice green dark tone. This here is, for example, a deep green or maybe a sick green here, this here. <clears throat> and you can uh, always uh, increase the green variation with yellow and blue to uh, well vary the amount of green you have. Then you need well a yellow tone. This here flat yellow is a good example. Then you need a good red tone. Flat red is for example quite nice. You can darken it up and brighten it. So uh, what else do you need? Well for of course you need black and white. <clears throat> so then uh, maybe a bone color like here pale sand or ivory those are good uh, variations or sand yellow so then you need uh, the basic metal tones uh, brass bright bronze for example then here gold silver <clears throat> then uh, one or two basic uh, skin tones you need uh, one or two brown tones Maybe if you need it, uh, purple or violet, and then you're good to go. So, and over time you can expand your color range uh, with even more and more colors. <clears throat> so, but uh, now let's continue with painting here uh, the silver parts. Um, I will continue painting all the metal parts now in silver, and uh, the helmet I will uh, paint in uh, bright bronze. And I am back when this is done. Okay, basically the first step uh, to paint a miniature we have already done. We have blocked out all the main colors. Well, it uh, still looks a little bit uh, kind of messy. Some of the uh, uh, primer showing through and here and there are our painting mistakes, like for example there. But that's totally okay. Because that is just uh, the, the base coat to, to work on. And uh, for that, that's totally okay. The next step, uh, for those of you who know me, is to use a wash. Um, it doesn't matter uh, what, um, 
what manufacturer you use if you use a wash from games workshop or vallejo or army painter or reaper doesn't matter so in this case uh, we use a black wash on all the uh, brown and metal parts and you see that uh, gives instantly the whole miniature a uh, three-dimensional look and uh, it hides some of the painting mistakes and uh, well makes painting a lot easier so just simply uh, brush on the wash and uh, to avoid having here uh, then on the main parts uh, big blobs that dry out and that look ugly you just simply clean up the brush and then with a wet brush you go over that part you see and then this uh, main blob is away and we can go on and have no problem at all see so <clears throat> And while the wash is still wet, we can play with it, push it into uh, the directions we need. If we think uh, something needs to be darker, then well, we give it a little bit more wash. Then if we think that's too dark in an area, then we can take it away easily, as long as it is wet. So... <coughs> There's still a little spot we don't want, so we just push it away. Just like that. Okay. Yeah, this little fur needs a little bit more attention than the helmet. Here I will also go through the face because, well, through the helmet, the face is in a lot of shadow. <coughs> and that will help here. Uh, okay. Uh, we want the uh, wash, for example, here directly in the recesses. That's where we really want to have the wash to give it a little bit more determination and three-dimensional look. And here the chains. <coughs> now we go over the sword. Yeah, that looks good. You see here, I've removed the main part now from the main part of the blade, so there won't be an ugly uh, dried out metal wash spot. So, and after this treatment, this miniature needs to dry now. For you, that may take some time. For me, it just takes a second. Ta-da! You see? The wash is dry. And yes, I've went ahead and painted the base also in black while the wash was drying to keep me a little bit busy. So. Uh, now we start with highlighting. Uh, we start with the skin tone and 
for that we remix our uh, first skin tone we still have it here on the palette there it was a little bit of dark flesh <clears throat> plus a little bit of burnt cat ready so. and I get many many messages about uh, my paint pots I use um, why I uh, don't like the dropper bottles and uh, well you see uh, this paint to open open for a dropper bottle it's like okay trade 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 then turn 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 then drop and turn 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 it's quite a lot of waste of time for me then also this cap is absolutely sealing well the uh, paints in this pot uh, hold the color quite well and <coughs> I have old GW paint pots here for example this here enchanted blue this paint pot is over 20 years old <laughs> you can see it also on the dust here we open it and we see inside the color is still in good condition and ready to use. That you don't have with dropper bottles. My dropper bottles always have here at the lid. There's also something uh, coming out and you see here it's, it's quite a messy stuff. And uh, I, I absolutely hate dropper bottles. So please stop asking about them. I use these paint pots. Get used to it. That's my version. <laughs> so, but back to the skin tone. We have remixed the first skin tone and now we will uh, highlight it with uh, Solomon Rose, like previously said. So, mix it in. Also, a little bit of water in it. Give it a nice smooth. Yeah, that's good. And for those of you that keeps asking me for main purposes of painting, I use a, a number two, uh, with a gold paint you probably can't see it well. It's a point two brush. <clears throat> this here is now a Rotmarder Kolinsky brush. And um, well, the size of the brush is. Uh, basically a base coat brush from GW so it it doesn't matter actually what kind of brush you use uh, as long as you can uh, paint with it well then it's totally okay so and what I will do now is go over the skin and leave the recesses dark and only paint uh, the upper parts in the new color so we Get then a nice transition between dark in the shadows and brighter skin tone on top. You see, quite easy step. I will finish this step now and be right back. Okay, the first highlight step is done, and now I put in some more of the Solomon Rose into the paint. And now I'm doing it again. But now I'll leave a little bit place between the previous color and the shadow so we get an even bigger color transition. Also quite easy to achieve. Also here on the face, on the highlight areas. And 
and every time you highlight the steps you are doing getting faster and faster and it's <coughs> even less to paint than previously I get often the question how to determine what is to highlight and what not. It's quite easy. You see, for example, uh, here the muscle parts, <coughs> this here, you simply paint the upper part of the muscle. And this recess here, this is the shadow line. There should be the darker color. <coughs> quite easy. Now we are ready for the next step, and the next step is we will put a little bit of pale sand into the color. This here, polymer color 7837, <coughs> pale sand. Just a little bit drop. So, just like that water and even more highlighting so and for those of you that think oh my god here's a too pale skin tone I want it to be browner and a little bit more vibrant, don't worry. We will change the color in a second. This is just the highlighting here, and we will shade it also with a wash. leave that to dry now and I'll be right back in a second to give it the appropriate shade. So Tubies, the skin is now dry and what we will do uh, now is use a wash <coughs> and uh, we will use a sepia wash. I will use the Citadel shade Seraphim sepia for that but you can also use uh, sepia shade from uh, Vallejo or whatever you want to use. So <coughs> I will uh, put some of the wash on my palette and now I will water it down with a blob of water. There you see. And with that we will go now over the skin. And what will what that will do is, first of all, in the uh, <coughs> main parts, it will blend together the shades of the skin tone and it will also pull a little bit in the recesses and form there a little bit more shadows, browner shadows. <coughs> we watered it down because we don't want to have it actually brown. When we are honest uh, and we look at a human being, there are no brown shadows in the skin. So uh, we just want it to have barely brownish. <coughs> so. And that's it. The skin is done. And, well, basically the whole miniature is now done. For uh, gaming purposes. Uh, what I will do now is I will highlight the silver a little bit. I think I will leave the uh, brown tones on the uh, leather parts like that. I think that's uh, appropriate for a leathery, uh, weathered kind of uh, feel. Uh, I forgot the horns. Uh, that we will also paint and... Well, let's go ahead uh, with the silver. Um, <coughs> I will use now a medium tone silver. So, first of all, I will remix my 
dark silver again. So that was roughly a 50 50 mixture out of black and silver. There you can see. Yeah, I bought it quite well. And then I simply grab another blob of the silver paint and brighten it up. So, and with that, <coughs> I will now roughly highlight the metal parts in there. So. Okay, then here the blade. Yeah, just like that. The side of the blade. <coughs> now here in the middle of the helmet. There again. Okay. So. And now we take a <coughs> pure silver and we will do it again. <coughs> and for the sword, we'll go like that here in little stripes. Like that, quickly over the blade. it a little bit more <coughs> dynamic feel okay so now we will paint the horns <coughs> for that I will use again the flat earth And there I mix in some pale sand. Yeah, that's about right. Okay. Simply paint over it. <coughs> okay. And while this is still wet, we go over it with pure pale sand. And have a look, the horns are done. <coughs> Same for the skull. Taking the mix. Oh, and here uh, I have to stop right now because I want to show you something. <coughs> you see, this is a brand new brush, and there you can see a little hair that is sticking out. And those hairs you have to remove in order to create a good working brush. Just cut it away, and you're good to go. So, again for the skull here, going over it, so using the pale sand again. This guy's done. Yeah. 
that's basically one finished Bavarian. I will now, now paint the base. It's also quite easy to achieve. For that I use stone grey now, this here. <coughs> so and I need a old brush for that. Let's take this one. Okay. And I will simply dry brush the whole surface. So for those of you that still wonder what this kind of stuff here is, this is post attack. <coughs> With that you can very easy stick your miniatures to any kind of holder, in this case it's simply a cork. Sometimes I use a very old paint pot. Or something similar that can work as a good handle. So, after this dry brushing here, I will uh, use now pale sand. Going over it again. Okay. Now I use ivory, this here, it's almost white. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay, and now we will uh, give this stone a little bit more color. <coughs> and for that I use pigments. Uh, you know here my pigment palette. Uh, I think I will uh, go for a reddish tone here. This here. Uh, this. Uh, it's a sanguine color usually use that for rust. Just add some water to it and then I will go over the stone parts. stone and now we will wash away most of it. Just use water and wash it away. <coughs> Take a bit of paper towel and wipe off the excess of the water. <coughs> simply created a very interesting looking reddish stone. When this is dried it will look quite nice. So, and there we have them. One finished Barbarian. I hope you liked this tutorial and we see us in the next video. Your Alexandra.